Hi. Uh, may I begin, B? Yeah, very good. Ready to start? All right. Yep. All right. For, all right. Thank you, B. Um, first off, thanks for sticking around. Um, obviously, this is a, a, a day that we were hoping would never happen in the sense of having to break up our club, um, having to focus on the future. But over the course of the last two weeks, we, we were really taking a hard look at what the trading deadline could do for us. Um, you've heard me state in the past that, that we were looking to acquire pitching, and that was certainly one of our goals. But we were also looking to find talent. Um, obviously, this year has not gone as we planned, so we really want to focus on what 2024 and beyond would look like. And we felt like as we had players that were attractive to other teams. We had players that were coming, uh, becoming free agents, and we felt like the timing, albeit unique for the St. Louis Cardinals, we had to do this. And um, it's not a happy moment, but we certainly um, are excited about the, the, the future opportunity we were able to acquire today. So at this point, be happy to take a few questions. Well, it's, you know, as far as like, like what expectations are, I think we'll allow the remaining part of, of this season to play out. I think um, obviously it's, it's immediate depth. Um, as, as you guys can imagine, there's been times where we've had trouble even filling out 13 roster spots up here. And so I think the, the flexibility that, that this does for us is pretty immediate, but we also do believe that some of these young men have some upside that will contribute for a long time here. And though we know specifically it's Sam um, that believes it's pronounced Robertson, what can, is that accurate? I believe it's Robert's. Robert's. Yeah. There's a different source. Um, anyway, can you talk about his, his strike hats, his, his swing and miss, and how that can translate to the Cardinals maybe in the series next year? Well, I think I think his actual mix is 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 interesting, right? Because he's not all swing and miss, but he uh, he's the strike thrower, um, does get ground balls. I think the the fact that that he's so young, he'll be able to go to Triple A and be knocking on the door to the big leagues is exciting. And so, we did look, we did spend a, a lot of time um, looking at that phrase swing and miss, and and by doing so, we spent a lot of time trying to understand pitch quality and and how that that might play into having more success in that. And so the pitchers that we did identify do fall into that to some level. And um, that does give them some uniqueness. But now, you know, we obviously got to get them into our system and see how things work. But, you know, clearly um, as we sit here today, just based on, on our analysis, our scouting, you know, we feel pretty good about what we were able to acquire. And so Robert's is an exciting arm. Yeah, actually, just hung up with him before I walked in here because he was asking for permission to go play catch. It was a, it was a lift day, as you could imagine. Someone gets just traded. The team that just traded them are probably like, do not get hurt on our property, all that, and which which look, I have empathy for. Um, but he'll he'll enter into our rehab program in Jupiter. But we do expect him to pitch this season, um, so competitively. And so, obviously, we'll know a lot more once we get our hands on him. But based on our medical reports, you know, we obviously believed in them or, or felt like he was in a good position to, to start throwing. And so, um, we do hope we see him this year. Yeah, we haven't seen him. Is John King come here and join the major league? I believe so. Yes, um, I say that in the sense of, of I do want to review like where we are in our roster. I mean, usually you don't have this many wholesale changes, but um, when I spoke to him, I told him to point his plane to St. Louis. Was it like for you to push the button on kind of working part of the roster? Yeah, I, I think I, I came to that realization though a couple weeks ago. Um, so to get us to this point, then became just the game of, of really, you know, our patience. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, both Monty and Hicks and even Stratton, they, they, there was a lot of interest in them. And, and so the key was like, you know, trying to, to really optimize our return as, as best we could. And, and so when you say, how was it to hit the button? I, I, I think mentally that happened a while ago. Well, 
Well, I, I think the way I would look at so far, like what we've been able to get in our returns are, are people that are going to be pitching at, at our upper levels, right? And so I, I, we feel like we've added some, some depth that will have immediate impact in 2024. Um, but also there are some longer range plans so far in that. And the trading deadline hasn't come and gone. Right. It's today was an event. We we, you know, moved three key players. Um, do I anticipate more to come? Probably. Uh, what do we have? Roughly 24 or 48 hours left in this. So, you know, we're going to just roll our sleeves back up after I leave here, kind of reassess where we are, um, might change some of our goals now because of what we were able to accomplish and so we'll just talk through that this evening and then you know prep for tomorrow and, and tuesday uh you know i've been saying all along right pitching 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 right. and we felt like we got a lot of pitching 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 so far and and so if there's something that might not be a pitcher now we might pursue it whereas a lot of what we were focusing on in the last you know, a week or so was really trying to find the right pitchers. Is it at all when you add depth like you had to the end of the I feel like like the group we got though really does have some upside. Okay. Well that's I'm not yeah, but there are also numbers. Um and, and in terms of like you know, taking more of a, I don't know, is the phrase like a Hail Mary approach or something with that. I don't know if we're, we have to do that, but like that's always in sort of the way we think about things. Like, you know, you know understanding like how much risk are we putting on one prospect. Uh, but we do feel like most of the players we got today, with the exception of the player rehabbing Roby, it's, you know, these guys are going to go out and compete right away and, and should have – some pathway to this organization at the major league level. You mentioned you spoke to uh, Roby, uh, you spoke to Seb, and uh, what can you share about his personality and his mindset heading into this Cardinals thing? Uh, which one, Sam or both? Sam, yeah, unique, right, name. Um, obviously, uh, this was probably like all of these guys a little stunned. Um, you know, getting traded is such a unique experience, and I think like, all of us don't really ever experience that. And, and so having empathy for, for understanding what that's like or what, wow, who's this guy Mo calling me and why and what, you know, where am I going? Um, all of that is like hard to digest. And, you know, even like the major league guys, like hearing it, it becomes real, right? Okay, I'm not coming here tomorrow and I'm no longer with the Cardinals. And yes, it's exciting. I might be going to Texas or Toronto and, you know, competing in, in, a, in a playoff run, but it's still kind of a wow moment or, or stunning. But like, he has excellent English. He's just like, you know, easy to talk to. Um, but I would imagine my conversations with him in the future will be a little different than today. And, um, you know, I, I, I told him to catch his breath and, um, you know, wish him success and look forward to meeting him. But yeah, it's, it can be stressful. No, I, I no, I really didn't do that um, because of the uncertainty of what if we didn't, you know, and and I and I know that's sort of a, you know, I don't know if there's a perfect answer there, but, um, you, you know, I, I I think everybody was sort of aware of what may happen, so I didn't feel like I needed to go down and just have face to faces with them, but, you, you know, obviously. Uh, like I said, even on the major league side, guys still, even though they probably knew it was coming, it's still like, oh gosh, here it is. What's your message to them after My message to all three was, uh, uh, you know, don't want to burn any bridges. Really appreciate everything you've done for the organization. Um, I wish you the very best, and um, hopefully one day we reunite. Well, you've got two starters under contract for next season. In this group that you got Sounds like we need more, huh? Do you see any of this group that I don't, I, I, you know, I don't want to go in like putting like, you know, pressure on people that just are finding out they're part of the organization in five minutes. And I, I think, you know, allow some time for evaluation. Um, we certainly think this group that we just got from the pitching side is going to have some impact on our organization. Um, or I should say on our major league club in 2025 or 2024, but I don't know the role and I don't want to define that today.
my guess is Tuesday, unless there's some travel issues that, that occur. But um, as you know, on Mondays are always off, and uh, so we'll allow them to gather their things and hopefully fly out Tuesday. I think I'll go back to what I said earlier that, you know, we understand there's still 48 hours left in this deadline, so it's not today. Um, we'll take our time, we'll reassess where we are, and we will, you know, plan accordingly. But, you know, sometimes it's, it doesn't matter what I want to do, it's what other people want to do. So I, I think we just have to be realistic about that. But um, as I mentioned earlier, I don't think we're done today. I, I wouldn't rule anything out today. Um, you know, again, like I, I, I do feel like it, to some level, I feel like today it's like it's over. It's not. I mean, there, there's time. We got to like reassess, and if there's a baseball trade to happen, we should be open minded to it. Oh, so JC. Um, I believe double A, but I'd have to check. Let me see if I have that. But keep going. You prioritize, talk about prioritizing pitching, uh, but what, what do you like about that infielder, CAC, uh, and what, what Springfield. Do you guys? Well, we think he's just a good baseball player. Um, and, you know, I think when you're, as I said, we were going pitching, pitching, pitching. But, you know, when we were trying to accomplish that deal to, to, to really get the most talent, to optimize talent in that deal, then we had to think outside the pitching box. And we really think he's a player that can play all over, um, kind of the ilk of, of like that Donovan type player. And, and obviously we love what we've seen out of Brendan Donovan. And, you know, if we can have another one of him, that would be awesome. Did that contribute at all into kind of as you're looking into this player to say we've got, we've seen what it can be like to have a guy that brings that skill set and how beneficial that can be? I would imagine like that's just like human nature that that worked into it, but I just, we, you know, we also use like scouting reports and, you know, st statistics to sort of make these decisions. And we just think he's a really good player. So, Mo, Ollie said something. He said, you wouldn't mind seeing these guys in Cardinal uniforms again, the guys who are leaving today. Does that enter into it? Can you, I mean, are those guys you would welcome back as you want to pursue? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, Ollie and I met with all three. Um, that was our message. Um, you know, obviously, Today, they're dealing with the reality, reality of, of putting on a new uniform tomorrow. But when the market opens, you know, we'd certainly have interest in those guys. Well, with um, obviously Texas, double A, changing Texas League and more, does that kind of play a role in getting looks at some of those Never hurts, yeah. Obviously, whenever you have your coaching staff that sees a lot of players, that's certainly helpful. But look, the reality is, is you know, this was about the, the parent club, the major league team. and, and where we thought we could optimize our deals. One of the downstream effects from today is the way that it would be string the next two 40 men. Obviously, you have openings now that you would not have otherwise had. Does that give you the possibility of flexibility for guys here? Remember, some talk about Mason Wynn here who might have an opportunity that would not otherwise. Yeah, let me address Mason Wynn. Obviously, uh, he's having a, a tremendous year. Um, we're super excited about what we're seeing out of him. But I don't know when that button will be pushed, right? Um, could I imagine seeing him in the big leagues in, in 2023? Yes. The timing of that is I don't know. But um, does having roster flexibility help in regards to that? Yeah, because, I mean, like the last like two weeks, we've been like hamstrung on, on roster decisions. So, you know, freeing up a few spots is certainly a, a, a good thing. I'm absolutely thrilled of what I've seen out of Stephen Matz. Um, when you think back to when we signed him, why we signed him, um, the last uh, three weeks was exactly what we were hoping to see, and it's been impressive. How does that play into your plan going forward, like, you know, what he does the rest of the way? Well, I mean, I hope he keeps replicating what he's doing the rest of the way, and if so, you can just, uh, you don't need a pencil, you can use pen and put him in our rotation for next year. 
field that you're that far away that, that this team can be competitive next season with some adjustments? Do you share that thought? Absolutely. I mean, we like our club. I mean, like, look, we can we can point to everything, right? Bad luck use excuses like WBC, we can injuries, whatever, but we, we still believe is a pretty good team. We really like our everyday club. Obviously, we got to sort through what the outfield's going to look like. We've got to resolve what that looks like um, and understand that, you, you know, in terms of like what our middle infield is going to look like next year, we, we need to do that. But we think just like pure talent, pure production is real. And when you look at, at, at some of the things that have happened to us this year, we definitely feel like that's where the inconsistencies of, of just how we played overall came into effect. But we do think it's a team that's close. Um, it's not that much different than it was last year in terms of faces and names. But, you know, today we had to take the poison pill. We had to make changes, and they began. I don't know. I, I mean, that's that's purely speculation. I think, like, like I, I think I'm just going to leave it as, look, 48 hours left. We'll see where it takes us. So what's your feeling on I got to go many? soon. I got to go soon. One last question. Go ahead. Too many outfielders. The theory that you have too many. I mean, can you ever have too many outfielders? Yeah, apparently you can. Um, <laughs> I think the phrase "you can't have too much pitching" is real. So, um, look, I. I you're just trying to find playing time. You're trying to have guys that run with it, run with that opportunity. And look, uh, when you look at our outfield this past year, again, not an excuse, just a fact, but when you combine Newt Barr and O'Neill, they basically have missed the season. So what did it do? It created opportunities for others. But in that opportunity, I don't think everybody sort of was able to sort of get going and consistently going. And we got to figure it out. Look. Those guys have talent in that outfield, and now we got to figure out which ones are the ones to, to, to bet on long term. All right, got to roll.